Are you ready to hear from the next president of the United States? The primary is definitely our Super Bowl. The New Hampshire primary is a big story because people in New Hampshire are the first to vote in a presidential primary election. New Hampshire is all about boutique politics. It's about the candidates having to come out here and work yeah. to have the conversations with the people. In New Hampshire. It's on to New Hampshire. On to New Hampshire. Here in New Hampshire. The judge is in the lead in polling. Who knows what can happen by Tuesday. You could see that people in New Hampshire are completely unafraid of anyone who comes in the door seeking their vote. Uh, and then you have the best coming in here trying to be the president. We must defeat Donald Trump. We have a right to affordable health care. Offer a big solution and fight for it. Heal the divides in this country. This election is a patriotism check. Take their voice to the American capital. With the volunteers that we have, we're going to win here in New Hampshire as well. WMUR is the only network affiliate in the state. And when we follow a presidential election, we're not doing things just for headlines or for ratings. We're doing things because we think they're important. The world's watching, and this little TV station from Manchester, New Hampshire, is suddenly a destination for viewers from around the world to get the information as fresh as possible from the Granite State. Adam Sexton is fabulous. He knows New Hampshire politics inside and out. We are covering this story for well over a year. And the goal of all of it is to paint a picture for New Hampshire of who's running for president so that people can make their own decision when they go in to vote on primary day. WMUR is part of our community. They're not gonna go away in three days. That's what makes us different than somebody who descends on the state to cover the primary. I think it makes this place unlike anywhere else. A lot of harsh words here tonight for President Donald Trump, but he will be able to make his rebuttal in person in this very arena, which he's expected to fill in just 48 hours. Reporting live in Manchester, Adam Sexton, WMUR, News 9. And make sure you join us tomorrow morning for a special hour-long live edition of Close Up, featuring live interviews with many of the presidential candidates. That starts at 10 a.m. Five, four, three, two, staying with you. One, we're out. Thank you. I got into being a reporter and got into journalism because I really loved it. Uh, being able to walk out the door and find a story to tell in a way that would help people in their lives in some way. Today we've got live close-up. We're gonna have, I believe, nine candidates coming through. I don't think we've had this many uh, interviews in the show before. It's gonna fly by. You're giving people a window into these people trying to occupy the most powerful office on Earth. It's just an uh, amazing opportunity, so I try not to mess it up. my desk here. <clears throat> this is actually way cleaner than it usually is. When Donald Trump came in to do a conversation with the candidate, I was here working. He's walking through this way. And I kind of see him and I was like, OK, Donald Trump's going to come behind me. And I turn around and he's standing right above me, like this, like just like looking down. And he's like, what's all this? And I'm thinking to myself, am I getting fired right now? <laughs> is he going to be like, you're fired? And he's like, no, no, no. I like it. I don't promote anybody, anybody in my company who has a clean desk. It means you're not working hard enough and you just kind of marched on. That's working at Channel 9 in a nutshell right there. You might have Donald Trump call out your messy desk. So they'll come in the front. The front door is unlocked. They'll come into the vestibule, wait for your candidates, let them in, bring your candidate up to your hold room, wait until I text you to say, okay, bring your candidate down. We typically don't do New Hampshire Close Up, which is our political talk show, live. We put out the invitation to all of the major candidates on the New Hampshire ballot who we were covering, and nine of them agreed to come in. We added a layer of having Adam walk between two studios live with a camera following him. That was a little nerve-wracking for all of us because we hadn't done it before. 
And if anyone asks you, which they might, like, oh, what are they gonna be asking about? Just say you don't know, like, this is the truth. I had to work for weeks ahead of time with all the campaigns to try to get them to a specific 10 minute window. I was a little concerned that someone might not show up. I didn't know exactly how it was gonna work to get every person perfectly timed for that show. All right, I Just remember, guys, that you're representing us, so just as professional, polite, friendly, but get them where they need to go. If you walk with purpose and a mission, yeah. then everybody will follow, okay? That's good. good. All right, it's gonna be epic. In the newsroom, it's all one team, but there are people who are under different umbrellas for their job. We have our on-air team, which is anchors and reporters. We have the videographers. They shoot and edit. There are producers. They are responsible for stacking their show, and they're in constant contact with all of the people who are presenting on TV Live. Stand by, guys. 15 and pre-pro on four. The director, he has a board with a whole lot of buttons that control all of our sources. And then there's an audio person, so he's controlling all of the mics, and then there's somebody in playback. There's our digital team. They're in charge of our website and all of our social media channels. So for me, I'm responsible for the whole big picture, and we want it to be as clean as humanly possible, which means we want to avoid any mistakes on the air. For me, it was like, okay, don't screw this up. Others have done this, and they've done it well. My predecessors as political directors, they're still around. You know, like, you know how to do this, you know, stay at it, you know, keep this thing moving in the right direction. It was a, definitely a sense of wanting to live up to the standard rather than being like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm about to do this live. I'm Adam Sexton, and we are less than 40 hours from the first ballots being cast in the New Hampshire primary. And this week, on a special one-hour close-up, we're sitting down live with the candidates as we get ever closer to the big day. Colorado Senator Michael Bennett, Governor Deval Patrick, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, Governor Bill Weld, Businessman Tom Steyer, Senator Bernie Sanders, Senator Amy Thank Klobuchar. You. How do you get up there on the stump and say health care is a human right and then not go all the way to... The I, I think health care is a human right, and I want to see universal health care as much as anybody else in this race. He's been on the ground here in New Hampshire a lot. I may be late, but I'm ready, and that's the difference. Do you go on being a Republican after this race? I think if he is reelected, it's possible the Republican Party might split in half. And I think the DNC chair, Tom Perez, should resign. When the economy's good, how do you challenge him on that front? All the extra income has gone to rich people. Your anti-corruption plan. Yes. Are there any of your colleagues in the U.S. Senate who are currently in violation, perhaps, of some of the laws that you're proposing? I mean, that's the whole point, is to pass laws to say that we have to make changes. We've still got a lot to come. What is the best way to convey that you're ready to be the President of the United States. It's that I'm offering a different experience. Look, if you're looking for the person with the most years in the Washington establishment, of course you've got your pick and it's not me. You didn't want to say that. They did. <laughs> Is there going to be an effort in any way to show a kinder, gentler Bernie Sanders if you're the nominee? Oh, Adam. Absolutely, <laughs> there will. Oh, get out of here. Was it Klobuchar Sanders or Sanders Klobuchar on the amendment? And we can ask her right now, once you start to enact a democratic agenda, don't we just fall back into the same partisan trenches that this country has been stuck in for so long? I won't let that happen. A lot of this is decency, patriotism, and I'm ready to win. All right, Senator Amy Thank Klobuchar, you. thanks for joining us on Live Close Up. We appreciate your time. Did you notice when I almost ran into the door? Because because <laughs> I did watching it back. In the moment, I was like, okay, and we're going to go talk to Pete Buttigieg. And I kind of go around him. Somebody was like, oh man, you almost ran into that door. And sure enough, when I watched it back, I was like, that could have been a moment of some unintentional slapstick. Usually in television, as YouTube can attest, there are gaffes and there are mess ups and things happen, especially in live TV. And uh, somehow everything just fell into place there and including not running into the door. <laughs> My son's gonna come by and stop by. His name's Sam. He calls himself Ham though. He's got a lot to say. <laughs> Well, oh, yes. I'm taking a picture of Dad's nose hair. No, we actually ended up with a mic over here. I'm not even sure what it belongs to. Oh, can I hold it? Yeah, oh, you sure can. You sure can. Could I have a bin? <laughs> well, are you going to do some broadcasting? Yeah. Are we going to go cover stories together? Uh-huh. 
It'll be fun. I've covered 11 New Hampshire primaries, and anyone who wants to meet a candidate in New Hampshire need not go very far to meet one. We start here in New Hampshire today, I believe must succeed next summer and next November. To go way back when, the primary began in 1916, even before my time. But by 1920, we became the first primary. It really got nationally known in 1952 when Harry Truman lost the primary and went on to decide not to seek a second term. In 1975, a state law was passed saying that New Hampshire must be first in the nation by seven days ahead of any similar election. This is the first, and it sure is the best. Candidates started coming here to get that first boost of support from a state-run election much different than a party-run caucus. New Hampshire tonight has made Bill Clinton the comeback kid. Especially the week between Iowa's caucus and New Hampshire, you know, it's really the center of the universe. I love campaigning in New Hampshire. Journalists from not just the country, but all around the world, suddenly New Hampshire has the attention of, of everyone. We want to thank the people of New Hampshire, right? Do we love the people of New Hampshire? Making a pitch to undecided Granite State voters, Democratic candidates stopped by the WMUR studios this morning. Mike Cherry, WMUR News 9. For this cycle, we were following 25 candidates. It was the largest number of candidates that we've covered in my tenure here at WMUR. In that week or two leading up to the New Hampshire primary, we assign each reporter a candidate to follow. Mike Cherry was specifically assigned to Senator Bernie Sanders, and this was his first New Hampshire primary cycle. And Monica followed Vice President Biden for her first New Hampshire primary. We're going out to Keene. Bernie is having a concert of some sort out there. Get ready for a drive. I always have so many bags because I like to be <laughs> prepared for anything. Paul, are you uh, good to go here? I see the camera, I see the tripod. OK, good. All right, all right, let's do it. Come on, ready. Here we go. It's kind of nice out. It is. It's very picturesque. Press entrance on the right side. Right hand side? Yeah. Is that what it said? Let the press go. Let the press go. Let the press go. There won't be any room for us. The press entrance is over that way. Oh, hey. Okay. Where that big sign is? That's helpful. All right. <laughs> the press entrance is right over here. <laughs> Where's the bomb? I think it's a better spot. Yeah. He is trying to make the case to voters that his experience is what makes him stand out in the field. Sanders held a standing room only event as he looks to recreate his winning campaign from 2016. So I'm gonna now edit it and send it back to the station. That takes a few minutes, so I'm trying to go as quick as I possibly can because the national media just got here. That means that he's close. What are you looking for that could help change your mind about which way you might go in the polls? I wonder if we can find out what the internet is here. That's the only thing that's holding me up. Does that concern you at all? You made that really easy. Thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm battling it today. I'm not working. I don't know what else to do. Why are you supporting Bernie Sanders in 2020? Bernie's the original gangster since 1963. <laughs> Have fun tonight. Be safe. Now, help me welcome our next president, Joe Biden. Hello, 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 hello. That's why Bernie Sanders will be the next president. I think I'm in pretty good shape, and I know I can take Trump physically and mentally. This is, as I understand it, the largest turnout in New Hampshire in this election cycle. 2,000 people. Thank you. 
We're going to try to see if we can get a one-on-one -on -one with Biden, just like going over there when he's done and asking him. So we'll see. I would be on the phone to Abe in Japan, who I know well. I will be pushed back to get the alliance between still South up here. Korea and Kim okay. Jong. We'll go over when we they're done. We have 10,000 Kurds who killed her. We're in a good area. It's a good spot. You want to get in the car and I can just start picking out the bites? We have a 10 o'clock show, so we got less than two. A Dunks? Dunks have Wi Fi? I don't, I don't know if they do or not. I think they may have. Let's think about which way to go. Which way do we go? Thank you. Thank you. you too. Wendy's. <laughs> Hi, guys. Good, you? Good. Thanks, Thanks everybody. We can voice in here whenever you're ready. I'll go in and pay the rent. Got to buy yourself a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> to be able to, then you can sit in there and edit for a half hour. Got my package for you. OK. I think my track is 18 seconds long. OK, cool. Cool. Thank you. I'm rolling. Sanders proclaimed that the campaign was off to a strong start in New Hampshire. <laughs> He's cutting staff food stamps. I'll take card two. Now Paul's going to edit it so we can get it done for the 10 o'clock. Right, let's see this masterpiece. OK. Joe Biden on the cancer that took his son Bo's life. He took questions from the crowd. Yeah. So how long is it now? 106. Yeah, let me see if I can add like a nine second sound bite in there. Okay. The card I just gave you has everything else. Right. OK. 88%. We're fine. We have time. It's going to be clip 3296.05. This is the burning audio is high and my sig out's low. Would you mind just like bringing the volume down? That's about it. Okay. There's always the polar bear. That's right. <laughs> I could put in the polar bear. So it ended up being what, 116? That's it. It's a wrap. All right, that's a wrap. We'll see it in about 10 minutes. <laughs> good job, Mr. Nicely done, Mr. Cherry. You're like a primary veteran already. <laughs> One down. Gad Zooks. All right, we drive. In front of hundreds here at Alvern High School's gym, Joe Biden talked about climate change, immigration, gun control, and at one point got emotional. One of the reasons why I feel so, so, so strongly about protecting and expanding Obamacare is because uh, I've watched my own family, how it works. So the, the Bernie story is airing right now. With less than 48 hours to go until Tuesday's primary, Sanders held a standing room only event here at Keene State College as he looks to recreate his winning campaign from 2016. So if they come out to vote in large numbers, there is no stopping our movement. Reporting in Keene, Mike Cherry, WMUR News 9. Nice work, Mike. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Welcome back. And done. Uh, <laughs> The morning of final pitch, I don't know that I'm necessarily nervous, but I have a lot of nervous energy. At that point, we were just all kind of thriving on adrenaline anyway, and we had all worked like three or four 15, 16 hour days in a row. This is how our, our usually our uh, crew list is. It's huge today, but it just was changing so much. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get a fresh piece of paper, write it down, and figure it out. Today and tomorrow, all hands on deck. Final pitch is when we have the presidential candidates do a one minute pitch about why you should elect them. The anchors toss to them, no prompter. It's live television. And our one hour is our one hour. And we don't go over that. Things that we become concerned about 
are not really technically being able to manage it, but it's more if someone's late. So here's what we're gonna do. They're gonna hopefully be on time or a little bit early, which would be terrific. We've gotta be super efficient. What we wanna hear in the text is candidates in the building, the candidates in hold, we're moving the candidate, they're in the studio, and then once they're cleared from the hold room, okay, front conference room is clear. Whoever's with them, their handler needs to stay back here. Is this like a college tour? <laughs> we're gonna walk all the way down to the back stairs. Then you're gonna bring them this way. You would have come out by master control and then we're gonna go down to Studio B this way. Just make sure you're paying attention and pointing out cables and stuff like that. They could be running a little bit late, so you might have to just wait. Will you do a text thread for us again? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 9, 10, 11, okay, we're missing someone. Are you, do you see yourself in that list? Is it you? You, oh, no. you don't see yourself in that list. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I see myself? Yeah. I'm not here. They're visible. Awesome. Pitch text. <laughs> Here we go, now, now it's named. The president's rally up here isn't helping because of the road closures. I think a lot of the campaigns are a little worried about how we're gonna get in and out. When people miss their slots, you have to start moving down and you can only do what you can do, but you wanna get everyone in. It's gonna be great and it's gonna work no matter what. You just wait to see what the wrinkles will be. As soon as Weld comes, just bring him to oh, Studio B. Yeah. The judge and okay. Yang, both the Studio A. There's something built in between there. I timed him in at 115. Uh, Smart. <laughs> she says she's fine with giving cues, with hitting the clock and giving cues, but you're going to be in there with her. Yes. Yeah, that could be an issue. I'll have to read it on my phone, and I can't EP it, but... Is it all the live shots up now that are supposed to be up? We just don't have Amy. She's not here anymore. Someone will call and figure that okay. out. No, we're good. Everybody else is up now. We are 40 to the top of show. I need you in front of the camera. You'll be in a monitor when we toss. I need Tulsi in Studio Wendy. A. She should make it. She's, she's literally right there. All right, Tulsi, welcome back. Thank you. Good to see you. Stand by Tulsi. You're on A17. Take the full screen. Transition. It's a transition. Congresswoman, your one minute starts now. As a millennial, I bring a new generation of leadership with a fresh perspective, but with the background and experience that will enable me to turn that vision into a reality. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Take care. I think virtually nothing is getting done in Washington, D.C. All right, we're still waiting on Biden. He's going to go next. They're just going to walk him. My colleagues tell me that maybe I've been around too long. The fact is that my experience has brought me, hopefully, a lot of judgment and some serious wisdom. Not busy, though, are you? <laughs> Let's balance the economy by putting $1,000 a month into your hands and the hands of every American adult. We cannot risk further dividing Americans with an all-or-nothing, my-way-or-the-highway politics. It is about creating an economy and a government that work for all of us, not just the 1%. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. I, uh, you, I think they're on the wrong okay. side. I think they're in the back. Yeah, yeah. We will look at the first time to go show. One of the candidates was stuck in traffic at the corner and literally ran into the station. I'm the only candidate in this race to win two national elections in a swing state. I'm going to steal a chocolate bar so that I can make it to Dartmouth. I remember saying, you had to run here, and he said, I look at it as I got to run here. Are Deval Patrick's not here? He is not. Okay, he's not here in the next five minutes. You're walking in the door right now. Okay, very good. All right, thank you. We'll see you in a second. I'm not too late for you, and I ask for your help, your vote, your prayers, and your support. Thank you. Governor Deval Patrick, thank you for your time tonight, and we'll be right back. Someone's running really late. She's got five minutes to get here. We might need to use the chair. So Senator Klobuchar was one of the candidates who got stuck in traffic. She's on River Road. And she was only a couple of blocks away, but there's an intersection that you can't really walk through. And so they were saying, we don't think she's gonna make it. That as we're all texting, do we have enough time for her to physically walk from point A to point B? We only had a couple of minutes left in our five o'clock newscast. She, we may be able to put her here if we She has 30 seconds to get into her seat. That's not enough time to get to the studio. But we have a camera for reporters in our newsroom. We thought we could make it to that camera position. Okay, she's yeah. here, she's here. How much time until she has to be there? 136. Hey guys, sorry for late. Put her in the seat, put her in the seat. Right here. Okay. No, she's going. How much time until we can hit her? 1.15. One minute? 1.15. One minute. We're going to Amy Klobuchar at Camp 12. She's in the newsroom. Right here. Camera's right here. Oh, I see. Is she ready? Turn the I
And now our last final pitch of the evening. And joining us live now is Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar. And Senator, your time starts right now. Well, hello, New Hampshire. I am honored to be here with you tonight, and I ask for your vote tomorrow. If you're having trouble stretching your paycheck to pay for your mortgage and your rent, I know you, and I will fight for you. Let's do this. Let's win. She did it. We came back, put our copyright on the air to make it a legal show, said goodbye, and it was great. All right, well done. Thank you. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to have a banana. Please do. Well, you've got a big night tonight. We do. <laughs> we sure do. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. I was really proud of our team being able to pivot and make that happen. And just seeing your vision and your planning and all your teamwork pay off, it's really, it just puts a smile on your face. All right, yeah. thank you. There are crowds gathered all around the state at this hour, including the thousands who have turned out to see President Trump. I was at the Trump rally. When our photographer arrived, he was looking for the cable that would get the signal back to the station. We couldn't find it. Yeah, Walker just stole our cable or something. SD cable that was left for them to plug right into Chef Camp 5. It's sort of very important for whoever's on camera to remain calm. And if you can't sit there and be like, guess what, everybody? <laughs> we didn't have the cable. It's nuts. And you're just kind of sitting in there in your head with your fingers crossed, like, OK, please don't let us be stymied by this one little thing. Tonight is absolutely epic, as we have the president and vice president of the United States here in New Hampshire on primary eve. They've drawn thousands here to the SNHU arena tonight, and there are thousands out there in the Granite State tonight kicking the tires and getting one final look at the candidates who want to take them on. It all comes down to this. He's up. <laughs> what am I thinking? Oh, he's in here. Okay. All right, alerting. President Trump from holding rally now at SNHU. We've been killing terrorists, creating jobs, raising wages, enacting fair trade deals. <laughs> My only problem is I'm trying to figure out who is their weakest candidate. I think they're all weak. All right, where do you want me? Right here, right here. Yes. So for daybreak, so today's the day. Today's the day. <clears throat> It's been months and months of the candidates saying their piece and trying to convince voters to vote for them. Now the transition is fully over to the voters where they have the voice. Take care, guys. We're live in Dixville Notch, New Hampshire for the first votes in the 2020 New Hampshire presidential primary. It's official. Dixville Notch and two other towns vote at midnight of election day. It's been a tradition for 60 years. It gets major coverage because it's the first real vote. This time it was very interesting that Mike Bloomberg actually won Dixville Notch with write-in votes because he wasn't even on the ballot. And as it turns out, I guess he would call some of the people up in Dixville Notch to ask them to vote for him, which they did. Dixville Notch is not always predictive of what the outcome is going to be, but it's just fun and it gets a lot of attention. Happy primary day. Happy primary day. We were here at six o'clock this morning. This democracy is best. It's really extraordinarily a uh, wonderful experience to be able to do this. Thank you for coming out to vote. We've been sharing hand warmers and hot chocolate <laughs> and donut. New Hampshire does it right, which is also why you'll have results tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, on a night like the New Hampshire primary, we build a roadmap so we know at 7.30 p.m. when we go on, this is what we're going to do. But from there, we don't know what the story is going to be. So it's much different than a newscast that we plan. The entirety of an election night is fluid, and so we're making decisions on the fly. It can be pretty intense. Producing a newscast is a team sport. So when we're in the control room, we'll have a really quick conversation and make a decision on where to go next. Primary night, that's when all the eyeballs were watching. It wasn't just up here for an hour. It was up here for five hours. The train was going, and it was, it was a sprint the whole night. If our numbers are behind, if our numbers are slow, viewers might go somewhere else to get them and we don't want that. We want them to be watching our coverage and have the latest numbers on our air. This kind of gives me a few minutes to make sure everything's working and 
Right now, it's not. Hello, do you mind uh, jumping into the uh, EMPS server election wire, stopping it, starting it again? Because we're getting some numbers in, but I'm not seeing them push through. OK, oh, yeah, they're coming through now. I'm getting them now. So whatever we did worked. OK, so we've got numbers. Yay. Yeah, so that was the first crisis averted. <laughs> Primary day, we were in studio watching the results come in. It was myself and John DeStaso and Scott Spradling. There was a lot of experience in that duo, not me. Like, I'm the new guy. They can reference primaries for Scott dating back to the 90s and for John dating back to the 80s, an encyclopedic knowledge of candidates, and more importantly, a muscle memory of how cities and towns vote. They've got that experience, and then I've had it hammered into me from the last 14 months or whatever it is, the primary. You just talk. Luckily, by then, if you're not an expert, you know, <laughs> you should find another line of work. I usually am writing stories on the night of the primary. My whole life I have been, but this time they had me on the set. We'd talk about how it looked, what it all means, giving basically analysis. The studio is this bubble of calm. Tom and Jen set the tone there. They're the anchors 20-something years now in terms of an anchor duo, and people trust them. Even when things could get totally nuts, they are 100% cool, calm, and collected. They're just two super pros. So on primary night, I was in the control room talking to the producers, to Alicia, to the reporters, to figure out what video and sound bites we were gonna put on the air. I'm rolling on Tim, I don't know who he's- You are, good, Corey Lewandowski, perfect, Lewandowski. Lewandowski, yeah, okay. thank you, yep. Donald Trump is having a big night again tonight, and I think, come November, the people in New Hampshire are sending him back to the White House. Mary Page was responsible for transcribing sound bites. We had so many feeds coming in at once that she was able to put those together and get them edited. Angela Tatro, she too is awesome because when you get smart people who know news, you don't have to really give them direction about like, can you pick this sound bite or this sound bite? They already know. This is an all hands on deck event that includes the sports department. Okay, all so I really go. care about is whether or not they beat NC State. They did they not. Lose. They lost? Yeah, no, they did uh, not. They're excellent at editing and they're extremely efficient because they work on very tight deadlines. So they're cutting highlights at warp speed sometimes. So we really can rely on them to be extremely helpful on nights like that. We've definitely, over the last 15 or 20 years or so, had our fair share of big news moments with Super Bowls. We're happy to take a back seat. The producers pull them as they want them. So I just edit what happens beyond that. That's their problem. <laughs> Joe Biden was not going to be staying here in New Hampshire for primary night and instead had plans to head directly to South Carolina. So gentlemen, let's begin there with the exit of Joe Biden. And also we've learned that Tom Steyer's not sticking around for primary night in New Hampshire either. Yeah, Jen, not as big of a surprise that Steyer is leaving, but a shock that uh, former Vice President Joe Biden left the state today. We are standing on a crate just so that we could try and be head and shoulders above everybody else. And hey, we got a long night to go. Adam Sexton was joking that we might be here through midnight. Well. I wore the right shoes because they're comfortable and I'm standing on top of a crate. Reporting from Manchester at SNHU Fieldhouse, toss it back to you. Breaking news, Justin. We can confirm now from a campaign source that candidate Andrew Yang is suspending his campaign. We also do expect to hear from him shortly. You know, I am the math guy and it is clear tonight from the numbers that we are not going to win this race. About one minute to warn. Here she comes. Not one minute now. Keith, now. Keith, now. Now. She's Warren, coming. Now. Hello, New Hampshire. Where are they? Michael Bennett. Unconfirmed. Just call Shelly. Bennett dropping out is confirmed. We do have breaking news to pass along. We can now confirm that Senator Michael Bennett is dropping out of the race. 69% of Amy Klobuchar's supporters who cast ballots for her today were saying that they made that decision within just the last few days. So let's listen in, Amy Klobuchar. Thank you, New Hampshire. We love you, New Hampshire. Thank you, New Hampshire. Thank you, New Hampshire. We love you, New Hampshire. Get that Amy Clover shot behind you. Can you make a full screen of that tweet that Dave has right there? President Trump is closely watching the returns from this New Hampshire primary. He did tweet just a few minutes ago. That's right. A lot of Democrat dropouts tonight. Very low political IQ. Make America great again and then keep America great from the president of the United States tonight. 
Pete Buttigieg is going to be taking to the podium very soon, and we're going to join that as soon as it does happen. I bet Buttigieg is going to be talking at the top of the 11, and they're just going to go live and then start when he ends. Pete's coming out now. I have sweaty hands. And there he is. Let's listen in. Thank you, New Hampshire. Am I still a Buddha judge, right, I hope? Whenever you think you don't need an eye, put an eye in. You get the walk-up. They're putting BOs and, so and potentially sales. You can cut the walk out. I'm taking care of that because he just walk walked out. out. Who welcomed a competing candidate with chance of vote blue no matter who. We are on the same team. Yeah, you say it's still too close to call because it's not like he said. He has okay, not conceded. ABC is projecting Bernie will win. Right, but AP is not. Thank you. See, you can put the AP up and send out the alert. Let's do it. Let's wake everybody up. <laughs> Let's light that candle. We're awake. Check it. We're checking it. Check marks up on the graphics so we can see that coming out of break. AP has called it. Together, we will stop sending our young people into the teeth of endless wars and start recruiting every American in the fight for our climate future. Okay, good evening, everyone. As Pete Buttigieg addresses his supporters on the right, we are now projecting Bernie Sanders as the winner of the New Hampshire primary. He is on screen left, about to speak to his supporters. Let's listen in. This victory here is the beginning of the end for Donald Trump. This victory here is the beginning of the end for Donald Trump. Yep. This is one long soundbite. I wanted to make sure that our reporter who was covering Bernie Sanders at his event could toss to a soundbite in our 11 o'clock news. They're gonna go to Cherry, he's not gonna have it, so I just need to know. Yeah, hold on. 46 seconds. Too long? Yeah. It'll have to be if they want. That's it, it's one, attach it. 46 seconds? Yep. 46 seconds of the Let's go to WMUR's Mike Cherry. He's live now at Sanders headquarters in Manchester. It's not instant. Bernie and Bernie Sanders just left the podium, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. Jen and Cherry will have to stretch to it. It's palpable as we just brought you. Bernie Sanders just addressed his crowd here at SNHU Fieldhouse in Manchester. He'll have to stretch to it. Senator Sanders came Need like 10 more seconds. As he thanked New Hampshire for the victory today. Bernie claiming victory, saying, quote, this is the stretch. beginning of the end for Donald Trump. And Kelly Hill, as far as my billionaires. Let's listen. Detached. In. Let me take this opportunity <laughs> to thank the people of New Hampshire for a great victory tonight. Yesterday's Mike Cherry, WMUR News 9. So before we go tonight, here is one final look at the latest New Hampshire primary results. Here are the top four Democrats in the race. Bernie Sanders wins it tonight, and Pete Buttigieg comes in second. Big win for President Trump tonight over on the Republican side. It is 86% to challenger Bill Weld, just 9%. <laughs> thanks, as always, for being here with us as New Hampshire votes. And thanks to our crews. Have a great night. Good night. We dump like a giant thing, a Gatorade over Alicia's head. Do you guys want to oh get that? But if you're ever thinking about how to finish, you got to finish on an open primary. And four I'm more, more years. And four four more, more years. <laughs> 11 down. Will I do a 12? I don't know. <laughs> this was probably one of the smoothest election nights in a newsroom that I've been in. Everyone did a great job getting it done quickly and efficiently. When we sign off after an election night, it's like two plus years of hard work are done. In some ways, it was almost like, I can't believe this is it. That's it. It's over. And part of me had been girding for this long night. Sure enough, they call it, and broadcast ends, and we're done when we're done. There was a, a sense of relief that, OK, we did it. Our WMUR team means everything to me. Not only did it feel great just to be done because we had accomplished something big, but that's what we had focused on for so long. It was just nice to see the culmination of that. I am the luckiest news director in this country. I truly am. These people that I've worked with for a really long time are family. And when you go through a time where you don't take any time off and no one complained, they knew that this was an important story, that it was important for us to make sure that we laid out the facts in a really fair way. And I couldn't be more proud of our team and how they jumped in and helped each other out, how nobody thought twice about working extra or going the extra mile or doing something that didn't necessarily fall under their job title. 
It was just part of the team effort and doing the best job that we could. Who's going to be the first declared candidate for 2024 now? AOC. <laughs> he's already he's already interviewed her. Yeah, we had at the at the rally last night when Don Jr. was going up to the podium. The yeah. crowd was going 46, 46. Uh, Don Jr.'s running. At that point, it had been such a big undertaking that it's still sinking in for me that the circus leaves town and we go back to doing our normal jobs. You feel blessed to have been a part of it, but at the same time, you're kind of also like, oh, scrolling through Twitter, like, oh, what's going on in the race? I kind of wish I'm still covering that, but you know, it is what it is. There are a lot of people every four years who question why New Hampshire, why does this little state that is predominantly not diverse get to go first? I'm not sure if you have another state in the country that is small enough uh, that you can get to everyone and people here at an individual level take it upon themselves to vet the candidates. The person I like to talk about is a guy named Carlos Cardona, who lives in Laconia. He's a small businessman. And he decided, he's like, you know what? I'm going to get all these candidates to come to Laconia. And he did. He just started tweeting at them. Everyone started coming to Laconia in this cycle, a city that leans red and had not been a focus for Democratic candidates for decades. This one guy, took it upon himself to do that, and he, he literally made it happen out of thin air. He said this himself. If Carlos Cardona went into New York State or California, he'd be lost in the mix of millions of voices. And it would be so easy to ignore him uh, and to bypass and for campaigns to just do exactly what they want to do in those big states. But here, they've got to listen to Carlos, and that's what's important about the future.